some people may think that what I was saying about the Holocaust in regards to God wasn't protecting them is trying to, be, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to say that just like in my last video, it, it said in the Old Testament that if you are disobedient, and God doesn't expect perfection, but a major disobedience, a major turning away from God would be ignoring Jesus. And I'm going to prove how that's true because Jesus on the cross, well, his final words, his last several, well, his last seven, eight statements, they were all from Psalm 22. That's how little, little the, the, the Pharisees knew. And then those Pharisees just passed down to the next line of Jews that we only follow the Old Testament. And many Jews, Jews have come to believe in the, the New Testament, but there's, there's plenty of evidence who Jesus was. It's, it, it's not even questioned. It, it shouldn't be. You have to be an idiot. So when I say, I'm not trying to say that the Jews deserved what being gassed. They didn't, but they, they believed false leaders. That's how much it can get you into trouble. Because if they were following God's ways, that that wouldn't have happened. Because God says all through the Old Testament, he will protect them. But they must obey because of how much he's giving them. So it's an agreement with God that you're at least going to try to follow his teachings. And when you say, no, his son we don't acknowledge him, and yet there was all evidence in the Old Testament for Jesus being exactly who he said, then that's how you end up having six million Jews gassed because if, the, if, if God was protecting them, that never would have happened. But they turned their back on God, and many of them just because they believed the false leaders. This is why it's so important to think. So getting to the last... Um, things Jesus said. Very interesting. Psalm, it's all in Psalm 22. And it starts with this, amazingly. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from, from saving me, so far from my cries of anguish? My God, I cry out by day, but you do not answer me by night, but I find no rest. Yet you are enthroned as the Holy One. You are the one Israel praises. In your ancestors put, in you, our ancestors put their trust. They trusted and you delivered them. To you, they cried out and were saved. In you, they trusted and were put to sh and were not put to shame. But I am a worm and am not a man. That's how they saw Jesus. Scorned by everyone, despised by the people. All who see me mock me. They hurl insults, shaking their heads. It's everything they did to Jesus. He trusts in the Lord, they say. Let the Lord rescue him. Let him be delivered since he delights in him. The clerics, the Pharisees said that. If his God, if he's really the son of God, then God will save him from that cross. Same thing as Psalm 22. Yet you brought me out of the womb. You made me trust in you, even at my mother's breast. From birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Do not, do not be far from me, for trouble is near and there is no one to help. Many bulls surround me, strong bulls of Bashan encircle me. Roaring lions that tear their prey open their mouths wide against me. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. All my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax, it has melted within me. My mouth is dried up like pots heard and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. You lay me in the dust of death. Remember when Jesus said he was thirsty while he was on the cross? Dogs surround me, a pack of villains encircles me. They pierce my hands and my feet. Psalm 22, they pierce my hands and my feet. All my bones are on display. People stare and gloat over me. They divide my clothes among them and cast lots for my garments. But you, Lord, do not... Be far from me. You are my strength. Come quickly to help me. Deliver me from the sword, 
my precious life from the power of the dogs. Rescue me from the mouth, uh, mouths of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my people in the assembly. I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him, revere him, all you descendants of Israel, for he has not despised or scorned the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly before those who fear you. I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Jesus fed many. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him. Those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. And what were his ex last words? It's finished. It's done. It's finished. Everything he said while he was on the cross was in Psalm 22. And yet what happened, they divided Jesus' clothes right there in front of him, were selling them. They pierced his hands and his feet. They hurled insults and mocked him. There was nothing but lions and Pharisees, lions and, and dogs, just waiting to devour him. And yet everything he said on that cross, along with everything while he was walking the earth, was all prophecy playing out. So when the Jews, when six million Jews die at the hands of terrorists, like back in the Holocaust, or continue to die at the hands of Hamas or Hezbollah, who, yes, are terrorist organizations, then you should ask yourself, given their whole history, why are all the nations seeing them as a terror? Now, uh, most of America would say, I'm anti-Jew for that, right? No, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just looking biblically. I'm not saying that Iran, I'm not saying, I'm, I'm saying all the nations are under God, okay? So he said you will be a terror in the nation that fell under if you are cursed. That will be what, that will, what will happen because God will turn away. So when it's been made out to all of the American public that we're the only ones that stand with Israel, we are. But then you have to ask yourself why? Because if they were, were, what God had blessed them with, then they wouldn't be see, there wouldn't be every nation that doesn't want to stand with them. But instead, the way the world twists it, the way that wicked one does it, is by saying, no, they are persecuted because they're the chosen. Well, I would argue that. I would say, God, if you have to send me to hell for saying that, then, then, then send me to hell. I have no bad intentions. I'm just saying that based on his word, they've been cursed. And why would that be? Because they didn't see Jesus for who he was. And there was plenty of evidence for it. God said, you will be a terror to all nations. America is the only one that stands with Israel. And I'm not saying that's wrong or right. But this idea that it's because of the Bible, well, they would, there wouldn't have been so many Jews that have died throughout the history of the earth had they not followed the false Pharisees that continued into modern day. Is Netanyahu any different than a false Pharisee? I don't think so. Which is why Hamas just happened to get into Israel and yet the Iron Dome just wasn't working. The, the security apparatus wasn't working. So see, those were deaths that never needed to happen. So when everybody says Israel has a right to defend themselves, they do, that is, they don't even have to if they would turn and seek Jesus and, and, and repent and recognize him as being the son of God. More than that, you can't defend yourself when you set it up for Jews to die. Then you just want to kill more people.